Hey there do-it-yourself technicians. Today I want to talk about my Apple Watch one week on. How I've been using it, what I love and what I'm a bit challenged by. I've had my Apple Watch for a week now and let's be honest, I love it. Yes, there's lots of gimmicky things that I'll probably only do for a few weeks, but there's probably a lot of habits that I'm also setting up that will hopefully last me years and years to come. Firstly, activity. I'm reasonably active, you know, I've had a Fitbit before the Apple Watch and I've always tried to make sure my step count was reasonable. But Apple Watch, I've taken it to a new level. Now let's be fair, I've got a little bit more time at the moment than I normally do because I'm working from home four days a week, but we will see what happens. The premise of activity on the Apple Watch is the three rings, with the idea of closing your three rings each and every day. I can happily say that I have closed my rings every day that I've had the watch for a full day. Didn't quite make it the first day. To fill the three rings, you need to do three things. Move, exercise, and stand. The red outer ring is the move ring. Basically, this is counting how much you move. Not in steps specifically, but in kilojoules or calories, depending on how you've got it set up. Mine's set to kilojoules because that's what we do in Australia. My goal is to get 3,180 kilojoules of activity. That's not total kilojoules burnt. Um, just sitting on the couch, you burn kilojoules, and it doesn't include that. So this is actually being active, whether it just be walking from here to the fridge or whatever it happens to be. The second ring, the green ring, is about exercise. For me at the moment, that's usually either running or a specific workout that I do. But Apple defines it as brisk activity, something that actually gets your heart rate up. For example, I've actually done one minute of exercise today and that was probably when I noticed my watch needed charging and I raced out to the car to grab the charger from there. The third goal, the blue or cyan coloured ring on the inside, is a stand goal. The idea is that instead of just sitting down too much, you stand up for at least one minute every hour for 12 hours of the day. Some days that's not quite so easy to get, others it's much easier. Thursday when I actually worked from my work where I have a standing desk, I got that goal fairly early. Today where I'm sitting down recording this and then editing it, it might be a bit more of a struggle. It's all about balance, making sure I do get up and actually walk somewhere and then sit down again and start working again. Other health related features are the heart rate monitor. Now there are some safety features in here where it will warn you if your heart does weird things that it's not supposed to. Hopefully I never find out what any of those are. But it is interesting to keep an eye on your heart rate, see what makes your heart race, that sort of thing. The other feature is Breathe. The Breathe app encourages you to stop for a minute or two and focus on your breathing. Just helping you breathe in and breathe out. Just a little bit of mindfulness to help calm the day. The last feature is sleep, sleep tracking. My Fitbit that I had used to track sleep and that was quite interesting. The Apple Watch seems to sort of track sleep, but kind of not. So I've ended up installing two apps, Sleep Cycle and Sleep Watch. Now because I've installed two of them, I'm not exactly sure where the data is coming from for each of them. And I know some of it's coming from the watch because it's got heart rate information but it does all pull it together into Apple Health, which is kind of handy. I believe the new version of watchOS, which is due to come out relatively soon, has much improved sleep detection and tracking. So I'm really excited for that to come out and will probably install the beta version on my watch. Okay, so some apps that I actually use on my watch. While we're talking about health, Strava. I've started to go for a run or a walk pretty much every day. Obviously this helps with the exercise goal and the move goal, but it also just helps me to get out there and push myself and get that little bit more cardio fitness back. I've actually come up with a new running plan. It's called One More House. Get out there and run as far as you can the first day. And then the next day, see if you can run one house further up the street. At the moment, I've just reached the tip of the hill. So my one extra house I've done four or five times and it's pushed me out round the corner up to the steepest part of my run. By the time I got there I was completely exhausted and had to walk about five minutes before I could get back to running again. But, you know, every little bit helps. The other thing in terms of fitness I use is a MyZone belt, which is a heart rate strap, that looks like this, that goes onto your chest and measures your heart rate. They also have an Apple Watch app. 
So I've been able to actually keep a track of what my heart's doing as I'm out running, walking, whatever. That's really handy. Other things I use it for a lot is notifications. I get notifications of all of the normal things that I would get notifications on my phone, except they're on my wrist. Things that I actually act on are things like Messenger, where I can see chats that I'm involved in and respond. The same with text messages and emails. Responding to these text-based things can be quite interesting. You can either use the microphone icon to start the Siri-like speech-to-text and have the system convert your words to text and then send them back as a response. You can also draw out a response letter by letter with the little sketchy thing, which works reasonably well unless you want to do more than about five or six letters and then it's not much fun at all. There's also an emoji button so you can send a just quick emoji response. I found these really quite useful with the speech to text that I've used most often. WillyWeather, the app that we covered a few weeks back, has a watch app. This is great. You can see what things are looking like for today and for the next few days. You even get a shot of the rain radar straight there on your watch. Really cute, really handy. That said, today has been the first day that we've actually had any rain. So it seems that I'm not sure that what this picture is telling me has anything to do with the rainfall because it doesn't look anything like the version on my phone. Timers and Timer Plus. It's really easy to set a timer on the watch. Three minute timer. Okay, three minutes and counting. That works really well. I'm not sure that there's actually any other way to set a timer on the Apple Watch. Certainly none that I've found and I can't imagine that there'd be any that's easier than that. That said, Timer Plus also has an app for the Apple Watch, but what it does is tells you how far you are along in your, in your Timer Plus timers and alerts you on the watch when the timer goes off. You can't actually create an alert from the watch itself. For fun this week, I started playing an iPhone game called Trivia Crack that I haven't played for several years. And lo and behold, it installs a version on my watch notifies me when new games are ready and allows me to play it directly from the watch. That is really so cool, but probably not that great for battery life. <laughs> Never mind. The last app that I wanted to talk about is the Camera Shutter app, which allows me to position my iPhone, as I've done on the tripod underneath the camera I'm recording on, and then press a button on the watch and take the photo. I can also set it with a three second timer so that I can set the timer and the photo will get taken. Really handy for setting up a group shot that you want to be in. You can check that everybody's in the shot and then hit go straight from the watch or the timer so you can put your arm down and not have a photo like this. Just another really cute thing that they've done. But I have to say, the speed of updates on the watch of what the camera is seeing is really quite amazing. You can sort of swing it around the room and it updates quite quickly on the watch. So that's all the good things, but not everything is perfect. Yes, I love my Apple Watch, but I do have one challenge, and that's battery. Battery life seems to be about a day, a day and a quarter, somewhere around there, but charge time seems to be two and a half, maybe three hours, something like that. One solution, obviously, is to take it off and charge it while I sleep, but I want to track my sleep, so that doesn't really work. How do I find two, two and a half hours a day to charge my watch. One solution a friend of mine has come up with is to charge theirs in the car, which is actually a really good idea. I spend about an hour and a half in the car every day, and that will probably be enough to give it the charge that it needs. My problem at the moment is I'm only driving to work one day a week, so that doesn't really help. What I'll probably end up doing is just charging it at my desk while I'm sitting around, because obviously I'm not stepping or standing or anything like that so that's the best time. The reality is also that I'm probably using my watch a little bit more in this initial phase than I will on a day-to-day -day basis so it probably won't flatten the battery as quickly in just normal everyday use when I get down to it. So question of the day do you have an Apple Watch and if you do what's your favorite app and how do you charge it? A couple of different questions there for you. Answer them by dropping a comment down below. And if you got value out of this video, hit the thumbs up button down there as well. Thank you very much. The Tech Doctor exists to help you become your own technician and learn about the technology, protect yourself from the bad guys, and fix it if it breaks.
If you're watching this on YouTube, there's a couple of videos you may not have seen before here and here. And there's a logo down here you can click on to subscribe and then click the bell icon down below to make sure you get notified of every new video as they come out. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day and I'll see you on the next video.